Hey, what's up? Intro to philosophy. Welcome to my lecture on epistemology of uh, pragmatism. Um, from the philosophers Dewey and James. This is our most American, I like to think, American philosophy we're going to study, not only because it was from America and large part some of the biggest proponents of them of this idea was were Americans when did when did William James live? Um, 1842 to 1910. So we're going to call this like 1900 in New York, America. Um, for James and Dewey was later until 19. Um, 50, 19, we'll say the 1940s, both American philosophers. The idea that I really want us to get is that according to pragmatism, as an epistemological system, so the theory of knowledge, right? Truth is, what is it? Based on, based on looking at that. Truth is what works. i.e. it's also referred to as it has a cash value because it's useful. So the truth is whatever works. This is really important as a distinction from relativism. Um, they are similar in the sense that they both say that knowledge is in some way dependent on the knower itself. So um, Dewey has a great thing that we are not but we're not spectators. This is worth emphasizing. We don't just look at the world to see what's true. We are creators. And more specifically, what they're interested in and that I wanted to kind of impress upon you is that we are scientists of our own experience and our belief. I.e., I can look at my own experience and I can look at my own beliefs and I can see what of, what of my beliefs are working in my experience and what of them are not. So how do we tell what works? If truth is what works towards some goal that we have, and here's a hint of relativism in there if you can catch that, the question is um, what does work or at least how do we know what works? And Dewey and James are both going to kind of advocate a kind of scientific method where we actually have to test our beliefs. They acknowledge that there can be different beliefs that work in different ways, and if a belief is working to get you to where you want to go, then it is a good belief. If the belief is not working to get you where you want to go, it is a bad belief. And we are each in the position where we can explore, experiment with which beliefs are working, and then also corroborate, compare notes with other people to see what's working and what's not. James Dewey was famous for his contributions to education. If you're going to go to become a teacher in America today, you will encounter James, um, I'm sorry, not William James. Oh, I'm drawing a blank on what Dewey's first name. John Dewey. You will encounter John Dewey's ideas in education in the sense that teachers are always running kind of experiments to test what's working and what's not working in the classroom with particular students. So if I'm a pragmatist as an educator, I don't just go into the room and say, oh, I know what, I know what works. I'm wondering, if I do this, will I get this result? I'm going to try this and see if I get the result. If not, then I'm going to have to change it. So there's a big sense of fallibilism, and this is the other reason why I love this philosophy. We have to admit at the outset that our beliefs might actually be wrong. And if we can't test them, just like a scientist, 
then we don't we don't have a way of understanding whether or not our beliefs are getting us to where we want to go um, we kind of have a problem. So I wanted to give this big overview of pragmatism because it's going to feed directly into our work this week on Buddhism and comparative ethics and religion in the sense that and this gets to the question about healthy mindedness or sick mindedness from the Academy of Ideas video. A healthy minded person is going to look towards finding ways to better and more effectively be in the world by constantly running experiments to see what's working and what doesn't. This leads to a, an acceptance of pluralism, which was super refreshing to me when I encountered it from having encountered the Christians that said that you're going to go to hell if you don't believe in the kind of Christianity that they believe. Um, James and the Variety of Religious Experience, a famous book that he wrote, was clear that there are a plurality, like more than one, plural, truths that work to get us someplace that we want to go. And that a belief in God can be tested in its practical applications or its practical results. And this is really what I wanted to emphasize, that pragmatism and beliefs has to do with practice. It's from the same root, where you're learning, knowing how to do things through practice. You're testing your beliefs, you're modifying your beliefs to see if a better belief gets you into a better place. That's the sense of pragmatism as in a system of knowledge, and we just barely touch the surface on what this actually looks like in terms of how to test your beliefs and how to actually interject a kind of attitude that a pragmatist would have. If you would like some extra credit, you may do the following. You may conduct an experiment if you want to do work as a pragmatist. Conduct an experiment about a belief or an action or a set of actions. So you need, just like the scientific method, you need a hypothesis. For example, does waking up at 5.30 a.m. each morning help? What's going to happen when you start doing this is you're going to notice all kinds of other variables that go into it. Well, going to bed, what time you go to bed makes a difference. Whether or not you're looking at screens before you go to bed makes a difference. Whether or not you're reading about coronavirus or the commander in chief before you go to bed might make a difference. All of these things end up interconnecting. So you as a scientist need to refine your hypothesis to be able to more effectively test it to see if you want to integrate this into your life. It might also be, another hypothesis might be believing in, believing that people are good. It's one of my favorite examples because if you just believe that people are good, there is a practical potential benefit. If your goal is to be happier each day, which I'm thinking that it is, but maybe it's not. Maybe you want to be pissed off every day because you think that's good. So if you do want to be angry every day, maybe you should believe that people are real jackasses. You should probably have evidence to support whatever conclusion you come to, especially if there's a plurality of places you could go with the knowledge that you're using. So basically what you need for the extra credit is that you need to write about an experiment that you're doing. You need to include a hypothesis. You need to include data that you found, and you need to then revise your hypothesis. So you're basically doing a scientific experiment on something in your life to see what works. And that's that. Um, that's an introduction to pragmatism as an epistemology and how you might use it to conduct an experiment to see if your beliefs are working or not in getting you towards where you want to go. There's a couple of other questions I got on the discussion forum, but I just wanted to see, get that big picture. We're actually going to shift and read some of this philosophy text so you can actually see um, Dame, Dames and Dewey. <laughs> you can see James and Dewey in action.
in the next video.